In this video, we're going to use a TI-84 Plus to figure out a regression equation, create a scatter plot, and even a residual plot. So to do this, we need bivariate data. Here's our data. This is a list of tree heights and corresponding yield. So these are avocado trees, and yield measures how many avocados that particular tree produced in a year. So for example, this 20-foot tree produced 594 avocados. So the first thing we're going to do is create a scatter plot. To do this, start by pressing the stat button. Then press enter to access the edit menu. These are all the list, and we're going to use list 1 as our list of tree heights. So we'll start typing in that data, 22, 12, and then we're going to use list 2 for the avocado yield. So across from the 22, we need the 718 avocados that tree produced then 372. Now that all the data is typed in, we're ready to make our scatter plot. To make a scatter plot, press second and then the Y equals button. That will access the stat plots menu. So you can make several stat plots at once. Right now, uh, stat plot one is highlighted. When I press enter, the first thing I need to do is turn it on. See how it's off right now? Now it's on. You get to select which type of plot you're going to make. These are all different statistical plots. The first option is the one we want, the scatter plot. Now, since we typed our explanatory variable tree height into list 1, we want our x list to be list 1. And our response variable, avocado yield, is in list 2. That will be our y. You can choose whatever marker you want, and you can even choose the color. But once you're ready to go, press graph, and you'll probably see nothing. That's because we're not zoomed correctly. To fix this, press the zoom key and go down to the ninth option, which is zoom stat. You can also just press 9. There's our scatter plot. So what we see from this is a moderately strong positive linear relationship between tree height, which is our explanatory variable, and avocado yield, which is our response variable. The next thing we want is to come up with the least squares regression equation for this. And there's a few ways to do this. One way is press stat again and go over to the calculate menu. Down here, option four, it says lin reg. When I press that, I get similar options to the scatter plot menu. For my explanatory, I want list one again. And for my response, I want list two. And when I press calculate, Here's the least squares regression equation. It says y equals ax, so our slope is about 25, and our y-intercept is 136. So let me go ahead and write that least squares regression equation right over here. I've written the equation in two different ways. One is using the variables y and x, so our predicted y is that. In the second equation, I used the context of the problem, and I also rounded the slope and y-intercept a little bit. Our predicted yield is 25.02 times the height plus 1.3652. Now, you can actually get this calculate um, lin reg menu to do even more. If you press the mode button and you scroll all the way down to where it says stat diagnostics, it's right there, and turn that on. Now, when we rerun that linear regression calculation with the same list 1 and list 2, we get a few more things. We get r squared and r, which are some useful pieces of information. The next thing I want to show you is how to actually get the graph, the least squares regression line graphed right onto here. Now, one way to do this would be to go to the y equals menu and actually type this out. 25.022, and here's where you push the X right there. You could type that out, and that would work just fine. But there's a shortcut. On the Calculate menu, when you're calculating your linear, linear regression, you have this option to store the regression equation somewhere. So what you do is you want to store that regression equation back in your Y equals menu. Here's how you do that. Push the VARS button and you have an option for y variables, and your first option is function. So what you want to store is your regression equation in the y1 function. So now it says store the regression equation in y1. When I rerun it, 
I get the same output. But now when I push the Y equals button, I see it's automatically been typed into my Y1 function. So now when I push graph, I've got my scatter plot and my least squares regression line. The next thing I want to talk about is residuals. Now, some of these avocado yields are a little bit away from the model, which means that for that height, the model didn't predict the avocado yield perfectly. I mean, like this one right here, it predicted quite well. And if you push the trace button here, you can actually jump from scatter plot uh, point to point. And down here it tells you that that's the tree height and that's the avocado yield for that particular one. So for example, for this one right here, the tree height was 27 feet and that particular tree produced 632 avocados. However, our model, which is shown by the line on there, says we would predict there'd be more avocados. What that means is we have a residual. Residuals are the observed value, what we actually have in our table here, minus the expected value, what our model would predict. So I'm going to show you how to calculate residuals on the calculator right now. If we go back to our table, so stat and then edit, here's our table, here's our explanatory variable and our response variable, I'm going to make list 3 equal to what our model would predict. So here's what actually happened, our observed. This is going to be what we'd expect. So we have to utilize this equation right here. If you press, first scroll up so L3 is highlighted and you can type into this little uh, bar down here. If you press VARS and you go to statistics and scroll over to equation, the first option is regression equation. So what it just did was pasted the regression equation right in to that top heading right there. But before I do anything, I'm going to scroll over to where X is. What I want to use for X is my tree height, list 1. So if you press second and the number 1, that will paste a list 1 right there. Now when I press enter, what my calculator is doing is calculating the predicted yield for all of these heights listed in list 1. Now since the residual is the observed yield, which is those, minus the expected yield, which is we just got in list 3 on our calculator, we can calculate the residuals in list 4. So I'm going to define list 4 by pushing up. I'll define list 4 as observed, which was list 2, so second 2, minus the expected, second 3, second 3. So list 2 minus list 3. There's my residuals. Now to a residual plot is the original explanatory variables as the x-axis and the residuals as the y-axis. So first I'm going to go to y equals and clear out this least squares regression line. Now if I press second stat plot and instead of graphing my list 1 and list 2 as the response variable, I'm going to change my response variable to list 4, which is the residuals. I'm also just for fun going to change the color to, um, I don't know, red seems like a great color for residuals since they represent errors. Now when I press graph, it doesn't look like much. So I'm going to go ahead and re-zoom it. I press zoom and 9 to re-zoom stat, and there's my residual plot. Points that are very close to the x-axis here represent trees that our model did a great job predicting yield for. Points far away from the plot, like that one, represent places where our model failed.